Japan's ruling parties want to create escape roads and other facilities to minimize damage from a projected megaquake. Officials are compiling draft legislation. Seismologists say a megaquake and tsunami could hit the region along the Nankai Trough. The active fault stretches down the Pacific coast from central to western Japan. The area is historically prone to large quakes. The governing Liberal Democratic Party and new Komeito officials are discussing bills to strengthen social infrastructure in the region. The draft bill calls for the central government to establish a basic disaster plan. Municipalities will be asked to create disaster response and evacuation strategies. Under the plan, the central government will cover two-thirds of the cost of infrastructure for things such as roads and stairs for residents to escape tsunami. The government also plans to subsidize the relocation of buildings to higher ground. These include houses and educational and medical facilities. Lawmakers say they hope to submit the bills to the current diet session. A government research panel is predicting an earthquake off Japan's Pacific coast. They say it's highly likely that a magnitude 8 to 9 tremor will strike in the next 30 years. The Earthquake Research Committee issued revised projections about quakes along the Nankai Trough. The 900-kilometer-long undersea zone is where one tectonic plate descends below another. It runs from central to western Japan. The committee says there's a 20 percent chance of a quake in the next 10 years. They say that rises to 40 to 50 percent in the next 20 years, then to 60 to 70 percent in the next 30 years. According to our research, it's highly likely that a quake of at least magnitude 8 will occur along the Nankai Trough within the next few decades. The chairman of the committee called on authorities to prepare for possible earthquakes and tsunami. But the scientists couldn't make predictions for a quake over magnitude 9. They said that no records exist of such a huge tremor over the past few thousand years. After the 2011 earthquake, foreign visitors in Japan were also troubled at the lack of information on the disaster. The Japan Tourism Agency will launch this week an English website offering disaster information for foreign travelers. The site offers information on earthquakes, tsunami and other natural disasters, as well as tips on evacuation. It will be linked to domestic railway operators and 59 airline companies around the world. Travelers will be able to learn how and where to safely evacuate. The site will also help guide travelers with a smartphone G GPS function to the nearest tourist information office. Operators of four nuclear plants in Japan are taking a step toward a goal that has been distant for a couple of years. They say they're preparing to apply for permission in July to restart reactors. Only one plant is online following the accident in Fukushima. Utility companies must meet new rules in order to fire up others. NHK World's Yoichiro Tateiwa explains. The four plants in question are dot across Japan, from the south to the northern island of Hokkaido. Operators must prove reactors at the facilities adhere to new safety measures that come into effect in July. Nuclear regulators developed the guidelines in response to the 2011 accident at Fukushima Daiichi. Japan has 17 commercial nuclear plants. At one point, all of them were offline because of the Fukushima crisis. Government leaders allowed the operator of the oil plant to restart two reactors last summer. They were concerned about the power shortages. Nearly a year later, the safety requirements facing the plant operators are even tougher. We hope to restart reactors as soon as their safety is confirmed. The new guidelines will force operators to prepare for severe accidents, including power outages and meltdowns. They must build a separate control room off-site to serve as a backup facility and they must install filters on vents used to release pressurized air in the reactors. That will limit the escape of radioactive substances during emergencies. Operators will also be required to introduce tougher measures against tsunami. They will have to study the potential height of a tsunami and build seawalls 
to withstand the largest waves. Officials at the Nuclear Regulatory Agency say there was set up three 20 member teams to screen applications. But some experts are concerned the system will not be effective. The new regulations cover severe accidents, which previous guidelines did not. The examiners have little knowledge of this area, so they'll be learning and making difficult decisions as they go. That raises doubts about their expertise. Regulators say it will take six months to a year to complete the reviews. But the issue is not how long the work will take, but rather how effectively it will be done. Yoichiro Tateiwa, NHK World.